Hello everyone! So, in this video, we are going to analyze this position. This position happened in the game between Spassky and Mikenas. So, it is white to play. Can you find a winning plan for white in this position? Let's see, is there a winning plan for white? I mean, let's look at the material. The material is equal. Uh, black has three pawns, white has three pawns, uh, both sides have a rook and a knight. However, however, white position is dominant over blacks. Here, black has no active play. This knight is pinned and cannot move. This king basically is, is, is it's almost out of moves, it cannot move to e5, it cannot move to e6, uh, it cannot go to f5, cannot go to g5, can only go to g6 and basically the king is not doing anything important on g6. So, black cannot move the knight, black cannot move the king and only move, only piece of black that has a piece of activity it, it's rook that can move throughout the 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 e file and so bl uh, black sure can play on the e file but here le let me just erase this this arrows and the colors uh in in this position here white is is always threatening to play knight on d6 so this rook is also tied to the to the E file because if white plays knight on d6, black has to have this move here, rook to e7. I mean, if the black rook goes to e1 and then to g1, then white simply plays knight to d6, winning a piece, winning that knight on f7. So, black's position here is hopeless. Black has no active play. So, what do you do when you have such positions? When we have a position that our opponent, our opponent's pieces are completely tied up, how do we proceed? Well, there is a way of playing these positions, and the way basically is to increase the pressure little by little. Since my opponent doesn't have an active play. I, I don't need to do it in a hurry, I can do it slowly but persistently. So here, one way of winning this game, and basically most simple one, is to increase the pressure. How do we increase the pressure? We attack our opponent's weaknesses. So, this knight here is ideally placed, we don't want to move this knight. This rook here is also ideally placed. It, tra it pins the knight on f7, and by pinning the knight on f7, it also attacks the knight on f7, so the king is, is stuck in the defense of the f7 knight. So, we don't want to move our rook, we don't, wa we don't want to move our knight. The, uh, the piece we want to move is our king. Where do we want to move our king? We want to move our king toward our opponent's weaknesses. And what is the relevant weakness of black, of black's position? Is this pawn here on c6? So what we're gonna do? We are just going to play king to c4, followed by king to b4, king a5, and king b6. And in that position, we can play knight to d6, and the rook will be will be going to e7. Then we exchange on f7. We get to a winning on end game. So here in this in this position white can simply simply play king c4. So now if black black now has has to choose something to move almost at random. Um black can go like uh, well if white uh wh white here is simply threatening to play king before so one move here, most, most logical move, is rook to e4 check. That goes that the uh, that's preventing white 
white is king, two, two to go to b4 and a5. So now white has to move something like king on b3. But now we see that white is threatening to take on f7. Right? I mean, if uh, if black plays something like, um, I don't know, sorry, let's, so sorry for moving on this oh. If black plays something like king e6, for example, then white simply takes on f7, and after king takes on f7, white gives his double check. Now we see the king is threatened and the rook is threatened. In the next move, that rook could be captured. So, this in this position here, why black has to deal with this threat of taking on f7. So, black cannot move the king, black cannot move the knight. Black must move its rook again. And black cannot leave the e-file, black cannot uh, play something like rook, rook takes g4. Since here, white simply plays knight to d6, winning a piece. And get into a very comfortable rook and knight versus rook and game and end game because of rook, rook takes knight check here, king on g6. Um, this is this is very winning for for white. Uh, there is a pawn here on, on on c6. We can advance. So this this end game shouldn't be difficult to win. So uh, after king on b3. Black has to deal with this threat, so basically black has to move its rook again, rook, rook, rook to e5. Now, no white cannot take on f7 check because there is no more double check. However, if now black's rook left the fourth rank and then you proceed with well knight on d6, uh, forcing rook e7, and now we go king a4. Uh, uh, and after king a4, now we are going to play king a5 and king b6. That's unstoppable. Uh, now black, well, moves this queen, and now we exchange on f7. We, we play rook takes f7, rook takes rook, knight takes rook, king takes, and now king a5. And we see that only way of black to defend this pawn is by playing king e6, king d5. So now black plays king e6. White goes king b6 and black goes king d5. So, but here uh, it seems like black has defended this pawn on c6. But that's not true. I mean, uh, after h5, we see that black has no good moves at all. This is a classical case of mind squares. If you ever read the book of Dvoretsky's uh, Endgame Manual, this is one of the basic principles of the pawn endgames. In a position where you have these pawns uh, standing opposed, uh, opposed to each other, this square b6 and this square d5 are connected. Which means that either side that steps on these, on these squares, uh, if le let me rephrase it, sorry. Um, this uh, this position with the king on b6 and the king in on d5. Let me just exchange the colors. This position with king on b6 and king on d5 is a position of mutual uh, zugzwang. If here it was white to play. Uh, white would not be able to defend its, its c5 pawn. And if here it was black to play, and it is black to play, uh, black's, uh, black would have to move the king, and its king cannot keep protecting the c6 pawn. So this is, uh, black here is in Zugzwang. Um, after black moves its king, for example, uh, for example king on e4, uh, white now captures it, uh, captures a pawn and then after I don't know king on d4 simple king on d6 followed by this advance so this was very easy way of winning uh, easy plan that Spassky did not find uh, Spassky didn't play like this 
so what did Spassky do and most importantly why didn't he find such simple ideas I mean uh, this this plan of 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 uh, taking the our king to the b6 square is very very simple very simple to follow why didn't Spassky didn't follow this this procedure so um, Spassky here uh, opted for a different strategy he simply played knight on d6 directly and this is a, a mistake. Why is this a mistake? Because here white is forcing the game before strengthening its position. Here, here is a sort of position in which black has no moves at all, black has no plan. So first we strengthen our position and strength, strengthening our position means to take our king to a better square which is b6. First we do that, first we strengthen our position, then we change the nature of the position. So Spassky first changed the nature of the position, he first exchanged knights on f7 and arrived at this rook end, end game, which seems to be very good for white, and it is very good for white, but it's not enough to win. In this end game, black has counterplay and white shouldn't have allowed it there was no reason for white to allow his opponent to get counterplay now black simply starts activating its rook rook on d7 check and now after king on c4 black's king starts play king e5 this is very important principle in the end game uh, the king is now centralized, black's king is centralized and here soon, uh, now even, rook on d4 check is threatened. Rook on d4 check followed by rook takes g4. So here followed rook takes c6, now rook check on d4, king b5, rook takes g4, now, now, now white's h-pawn is hanging. So now white played h5 and now followed rook on g5. And then white played rook to g6, and and black responded rook takes h5. I said white took on a uh, white played rook g6, or I say black played rook g6. So white white played rook g6, and now black simply took on h5. White advanced its pawn. Now now the the here um, we see that. Rook takes on on g7 is not gonna work because of let me see let me see let me see possibly king on f4 here is good I I don't know this has to be played carefully I mean you can play king on d4 and but then rook on d7 check and no 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 we have to play simply king on e4 so i here i i would prefer after rook takes e7 something like king f4 you know now now we see the pawn is pinned like uh, white has to play something like king to h6 after which we can uh, play rook to h1 c6 rook c1 c7 h5 now this should be a draw because we are going to get a end game of rook and pawn against uh, of rook against pawn we are just going to move our pawn and when the white plays rook h7 we play king on g3 and we see that white king is very far away from this pawn here so there is no way for white to stop it right so uh how 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 can white stop the advance of like sage pawn there is no way white will have to sacrifice its rook so here after king g3 you see there is no time for the for white for the white king to stop the pawn because after king g2 King e6, oh, oh sorry, king, king e6, h2, black is threatening to advance. And after this check here, 
rook on g7 check black has this resource of playing king h1 and we see that now uh, if white play mo moves the king somewhere then this position is a uh, drawn by by stalemate uh, so here in this position after after king h1 white simply has to move its rook from uh, away from the g file by playing i don't know rook to the h file but then our king just just go to the g file and again the threat of advancing the pawn so this this position here is completely drawish so basically um after 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 rook takes h5 here um black uh why didn't take on g7 although why why didn't take on g7 but that that's that's also draw white played c6 and black played king on f4 is, with check black is pre just preparing to exchange this rook for this pawn and get into that sort of end end game we just discussed now uh, it followed king on b6 rook on h1 the rook is preparing to go to c1 or, or b1 is check and c7 on oh, no, rook b1 check king a6 rook c1 king on b7 and now rook takes pawn check uh king takes and now h5 it's simply a uh, black simply going to advance it's it's h pawn and again this is a draw because after rook takes h rook takes g7 h4 rook h7 king g3 king on d6 h3 king on e5 h2 King e4, king g king g2. Uh, this is again a draw because after this check, there is again this this resource of playing king on h1, and this is a stalemate. So uh, that's what happened in the game. So in conclusion, uh, usually in these sort of positions in which our opponent cannot cannot play, uh, our, our opponent has no active plan. First we strengthen our position first we should have moved our king to b6 and meanwhile black has no 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 good alternatives no good way of playing it so instead of rushing to the exchange on f7 we should first have strengthened our king's position and only then um forced a winning pawn end game as I shown in the beginning of the video. So thank you for watching and subscribe and like this video. Goodbye.